All right, well, now this is the time of our service where we remember Christ. And this is a time where Christians look back on what Christ did in their place at the cross. Just a few minutes, we're going to be taking symbols of the bread, of the blood and the body of Christ. We're going to be taking a bit of bread and juice. It's good for us to remember that these are just symbols of Christ himself. Uh, Today, we're going to be looking at a passage where Jesus describes himself as light. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to John chapter 8? We're going to be looking at one verse, and that verse is verse 12. Some men are coming down the aisles. If you don't actually have a Bible, just raise your hand and it'll get one to you. And if you don't own a Bible, please consider this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting in John 7 and John 8 is the Feast of Booths. This is a time when all of Israel descends upon Jerusalem and they celebrate the way that God sustained them in the wilderness for 40 years. But what is taking place here is that Jesus is teaching in the temple while he's there in Jerusalem. And the Pharisees are becoming increasingly hostile to Jesus because it's becoming apparent to them that Jesus is gathering a following, and they see that as a threat to their position as the self-appointed religious leaders in Israel. If you look back in chapter 7 at verses 40 and 41, you'll see that the common people don't have a consensus on who Jesus is either. Some of them are saying, this is the prophet, and others are saying, no, this is the Christ. So there is division. There's no real consensus on who Jesus is. But Jesus addresses exactly who he is in our passage in verse 12 of chapter 8. And as we read it, notice what Jesus says about the world. There's a message there about the world. Notice what he says about himself. And then notice at the end of the verse, a promise that he makes for us. And these things will help us remember him rightly. So reading verse 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but they will have the light of life. So Jesus here is speaking about light. He's teaching about himself. And he tells us that what we already know about light, and that is that light brings illumination. It makes you able to see, and it makes you able to understand a setting or a circumstance. And without light, you can't properly assess and understand that circumstance. Jesus here is using light as an analogy for spiritual comprehension. And what he says about the world is is pretty apparent when you look at the beginning of the verse. He says, I am the light of the world. Now we know that anything that needs light is in darkness. Jesus is the light of the world. No ability to provide for its own illumination. The world has absolutely no way to provide its own illumination into a spiritual situation. Uh, The world is blind in darkness, and it's in need of help in that darkness. So the world is blind to spiritual truth in its natural-born condition. It lacks the ability to understand spiritual truth. So Jesus is saying everybody in this world is born with a problem, and that problem is... They're not able to assess their true spiritual condition on their own. But then Jesus begins speaking about himself, and you can see it in the same phrase where he says, I am the light of the world. Spiritual truth is found uniquely in Christ. The teaching about Jesus, namely who he is and what he did on the cross in place of sinners who would put their trust in him to save them, is what a person must possess. It's what a person must embrace in order to be rescued from the spiritual darkness that they're in. Jesus is saying there is one body of spiritual truth. And he's saying that body of spiritual truth is the teaching about me. So that's what Jesus says about himself. He says, I am the content of spiritual truth. Then he makes a promise at the end of the verse. And the promise is given to a particular group of people. And that group of people is the people who follow him. The promise is that those people, and those people alone, will never walk in darkness, and they will have the light of life. 
That's Jesus' promise. But there's an activity that liberates a person from their spiritual darkness, and that activity is following Christ. And we know what it means to follow somebody. It involves surrender. It involves giving up your own ideas of spiritual truth and embracing what Scripture teaches about Christ. So the person who surrenders their own thoughts about spiritual truth and they embrace the thoughts of Christ and who he is, is the one who actually will no longer walk through life blind, but they will have the light of life. And the light of life is the understanding of who Christ is. It's the understanding that he gave his own self to purchase people away from the penalty of their sin. And he did that on a cross when he hung on that cross and he bore the Father's wrath against every sin that was committed by those who would put their trust in him. So if that's you this morning, if you understand Christ as the truth, if you understand Christ as the Savior, the one who gave his life for you, the only one through whom you can have eternal life, then this is a time for you. When the elements come to you, take them and hold them for a second and ponder the fact that Jesus opened your eyes when you were blind and made you able to understand him as the Savior that you need and thank him for what he did in your place. And then when your heart is prepared, uh, take the elements on your own. If you're here this morning and you have not put your trust in Christ, whatever age you are, whether you're the oldest person in this room or the youngest person in this room, you need to know that there is one and only one Savior, and that person is Jesus Christ, and he is the one who can save you. The way he saves you is when you surrender your life to his lordship over you. There will be people after the service up here to my right, to your left. Uh, they would love to talk with you about a relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ. Men, come and serve us, and then when we've all had a chance to take the elements, I will close our time in prayer.